Today we're going to look at a nice sequence of integrals that was in an issue of Math Magazine from 1985. And the idea here is to find a closed form, well, I guess I should say a simpler closed form of this object right here. So we have n plus 1 times the integral from 0 to x. Then we have x minus 2 to the n power over 1 minus t to the n plus 2 power. And I'd like to point out here that x is less than 1, or it's really between negative 1 and 1. But that means that the t values inside of this integral are also between negative 1 and 1. And that motivates us to maybe expand this as a power series, where we're like expanding the denominator, or really like 1 over the denominator. But let's maybe recall how that goes. So like I said, we need to recall that if we have, let's maybe say z plus 1 to the alpha power, that's going to be equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to infinity of alpha choose k times z to the k. And I guess I should say we could have a plus w here if we wanted to, but we don't really need that in this case. Okay, so, well, what's this alpha? Well, in fact, it can be any complex number. And what you get here is that if this is a positive integer, then this truncates to a finite sum, and, not, and thus it always converges. But if this is not a positive integer, I really should be saying non-negative integer, then we have a radius of convergence, which is 1. Okay, so let's see how that applies to our problem. Let's take this 1 over 1 minus t, all raised to the n plus 2, and we can write that as 1 minus t raised to the, let's see, minus n minus 2. Okay, nice. But now maybe view this as minus t plus 1 raised to the minus n minus 2. And then we'll expand this using the formula above where z is being replaced with negative t. So that's going to give me this sum as k goes from 0 up to infinity. And then we're going to have a minus 1 to the k. I'll take the minus sign attached to this minus t to the k and put it out front. And then we'll have this binomial coefficient, minus n minus 2, choose k. And then we have t to the k. Now, you might recall that we've got like a nice formula for binomial coefficients involving factorials, but that really only works for non-negative integers. What about something more general? Well, let's maybe do it just in this case right here, and then you can expand it to this more general case. So let's maybe write this up here as a note. So here we have minus n minus 2 choose k. So what this will be is a descending product of k terms in the numerator starting at minus n minus 2. So that's going to be minus n minus 2, minus n minus 3, minus n minus 4. And let's see, what will that last one be? Well, if we need k total terms, that last one will be minus n minus k minus 1. And then in the denominator, just like classically, we'll have a k factorial. Now, let's go up here and maybe add an assumption. And that assumption is that n is bigger than or equal to 0, which I think that this probably works for more general values than given this approach. But as you'll see, we're going to solve this twice. And with the second approach, we really need this assumption. Okay, so if n is bigger than or equal to 0, then minus n minus 2 is negative. In fact, all of these numbers right here are negative. So that means we can factor a minus 1 out of them. But how many are there? There are exactly k. So if we factor a minus 1 out of all of them, we have minus 1 to the k. And then we're left with n plus k plus 1 times n plus k all the way down n plus 3 times n plus 2 and then this is going to be all over k factorial. 
but now we've got a descending product that starts at n plus k plus one has k terms over k factorial, but that's another binomial coefficient. That's the binomial coefficient n plus k plus one choose k, but we just have a minus one to the k out front. Okay, great. So now let's go over here and see what happens. So we actually get quite a bit of simplification. The minus one to the k and the minus one to the k will cancel. We'll have like minus one to the two k, but that's clearly positive one. And then here we'll have n plus k plus one choose k. Okay, great. Now let's put this into our integral and see what sort of nice simplification we get. So let's start, we have this n plus one, our integral from zero up to x, and then we'll have x minus t to the n over one minus t to the n plus two dt. So I'm really just like bringing this over. So we've got it in a good spot. Okay, so now let's expand that denominator as we did over here, and we'll bring the integration inside of the summation. And this is totally allowed here because since t is less than one, this absolutely converges and thus you can exchange summation and integration. Okay, so anyway, let's see. We have n plus one here, and then we'll have our sum as k goes from zero up to infinity. We have this n plus k plus one choose k, and then after that, we'll have our integral from zero to one of we'll have t to the k times this x minus t raised to the n power. So t to the k, x minus t raised to the n power dt. But in fact, that integral has a well-known value. And we explored this on a previous video, and what this is equal to is actually n factorial times k factorial over n plus k plus one factorial. So you can just look for a video we, where we discussed the beta function versus the gamma function. This is actually related to the beta function. And that happened if there was an x here or if this x was equal to one, but with x kind of being more free, we actually get something else and that'll be x to the k plus n plus one, and you can see that via a very simple substitution. Okay, so let's see where this leaves us. So we'll have the sum as k goes from zero up to infinity. So using the factorial version of the binomial coefficient, what will we have? Well, we'll have n plus k plus one factorial over n plus one factorial times k factorial. And then that will be multiplied by, well, let's bring this n plus one inside, and then we'll have this stuff over here. So that'll be an n factorial over a k factorial times an n plus k plus one factorial. And then we've got that x to the k plus n plus one. So let's put an x to the k here, and then out front we'll put an x to the n plus one, because we can factor that out, it doesn't depend on k. But now if you look at this closely, a ton of stuff is gonna cancel. Here this n plus one factorial will cancel with this n plus one times n factorial. And then, well, I put this k factorial in the denominator, that should have been in the numerator. And that will cancel with the k factorial that was over here. And then we're just left with this n plus k plus one factorial, which will cancel. So in the end, we're left with x to the n plus one times, well, we've got this sum as k goes from zero to infinity of x to the k, but that's well known to be a geometric series, which sums to one over one minus x because we're in the radius of convergence. So our final form here is x to the n plus one over one minus x. Okay, so that's our first approach. I like it because it's really direct, but it relies on the knowledge of this over here. Let's look at maybe a simpler but less direct approach. So we just found the value. We just really did the goal of the whole video already, but I'd like to do it again using a less direct approach. I think I've said this before, but you can learn a lot about what really math in general and certain problems specifically by solving them in different methods. Okay. 
So what we're gonna do here is name this equal to elements of a sequence a sub n. So we'll set a sub n equal to n plus one times our integral from zero up to x of x minus t raised to the n over one minus t raised to the n plus two dt. And now let's make a quick observation. And that'll be just the value of a sub zero. And you can calculate the first several if you'd like to, but I think maybe it's kind of good enough just to do the first, especially since we had our previous solution. So that'll be our integral from zero to x. And then we'll have one over t, one minus t squared. But this is a simple integral. That'll give us one over one minus t. We need to evaluate that from zero up to x but that's gonna leave us with one over one minus x minus, well, one over one minus zero, which is one. But I'm gonna write that one as one minus x over one minus x. So in the end, we get x over one minus x, but that's x to the zero plus one over one minus x. That holds the form that we had before. Okay, so next up, I'd like to see if we can find a relationship between a n and the term that is before. So let's copy our a n over. So we'll have, again, n plus one, we have our integral from zero to x, x minus t to the n. And then I'm going to next write this as dt over one minus t raised to the n plus two. So I wrote this like this because we'll use integration by parts. This will play the role of u in integration by parts. Well, as this dt over one minus t to the n plus two will play the role of dt. So let's make the little calculations for that over here. So if u is equal to x minus t raised to the n power, that means that du, well, that's gonna be minus n times x minus t raised to the n minus first power dt. So that's simply using the power rule along with the derivative of negative t as a minus one. That's how we pick that up. And then our dv, well, that's gonna be the rest of it. So dt over one minus t raised to the n plus two. So taking the antiderivative, we'll have v is equal to one over um, n plus one times one over one minus t to the n plus one. Notice there are a couple of minus signs that cancel each other out in that portion of the calculation. Okay, so let's see where this brings us. Keeping in mind the standard integration by parts formula, which is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so let's see, u times v here. So that's gonna leave us with n plus one over n plus one and then we'll have x minus t raised to the n over one minus t raised to the n plus one. We need to evaluate that from zero up to x. Then next up, we'll have the integral of v du, but the minus sign will get canceled by this minus sign here. These n plus ones will be canceled and we'll have a plus n times the integral from zero to x of x minus t raised to the n minus one over one minus t raised to the n plus one dt. So now let's see what both of those give us. So if we plug x into this first, well that numerator is zero. So all we get is from plugging zero into that. So if we plug zero in for t, we'll get x to the n over one minus zero. In other words, we'll have x to the n. And it's a lower bound of integration, so it gives you a minus sign. And then look at this. This is simply the previous term from our sequence a n minus one. But now here we can just apply our, you know, recursion that we've just built again. So this is gonna be minus x to the n, minus x to the n minus one, minus a n minus two. And then likewise, we can go again, minus x to the n, minus x to the n minus one, minus x to the n minus two, minus a n minus three. 
and there's nothing stopping us from going all the way down until we hit a zero. So that means we'll have a n is equal to minus x to the n plus x to the n minus one all the way down x squared plus x and then plus a zero, which we calculated over here to be x over one minus x. So now we'll use the standard formula for the sum of a finite geometric series to finish this thing off. So let's see, this is going to sum up to x minus x to the n plus one over one minus x, but look, it's attached to a minus sign, so it's got this minus sign out front. And then we're adding that to x over one minus x. But if we add those two things together, let's observe that the x parts will cancel because we can bring this minus sign in. And then we're simply left with, well, exactly what we had before, which is to be expected because, well, you should get the same solution when you solve a problem two different ways. And that's a good place to stop.